Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Griffin and today we are going to be going over how to build this dashboard in Excel. So this is a very good looking simple dashboard in Excel and we see that it's built of a couple different um, things. We have five different pivot tables. We have the sales trend, sales by salesperson, sales by region, top five customers, and the count of transactions by invoice amount. So we have five pivot tables which are both or which are all connected to both of these slicers. So it's a slicer or this uh, visual filter based on salesperson and region. And then up here, I just put XYZ company 2014 dashboard. So we're going to be building this basic um, dashboard today using pivot tables in Excel. And we have our instructions here, and I'm going to go back and reference these. But essentially what we're going to do on each different worksheet, we're going to create a different slicer. And then we're going to copy and paste these charts, these pivot charts all the way back here to our dashboard so let's get a look at our data we have order id order date customer id we have a ton of information based on uh, customer shopping so we have revenue shipping fee what they ordered what the category was what the price was what the quantity was so we have a lot of really good information here and this data is provided by excel campus john here's the link right here and we have, let's see, we have 370 rows of data. So the first thing I want to do, since I'm going to be building a bunch of pivot tables, I'm actually going to name this entire range. When building pivot tables, you can manually select the data that you want. Um, so if I clicked in here and then went to uh, insert and pivot table, it's going to recognize that this entire table um, is the data that I want. But if I'm already on a new worksheet or if I maybe have all my pivot tables on a different worksheet, that's going to take a lot of time to, you know, keep going back here to hit start to select where I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a named range. So I'm going to select from A1 all the way to Z370, right? So I'm selecting that whole range. And then I'm going to go to the home tab. All right, you, it doesn't matter what tab you're in, but right here it says A1 in this name box. And right here I'm just going to name this data. And when I hit enter, now if I reference this entire range again, it says that it's data. Or if I go over to formula, name manager, it shows that uh, my data is showed as data. And for example, if I, you know, come over here into a different cell and I do equals data, you know, it'll show me that I have this entire data set referenced here. But let me go ahead and undo that. So the first one we're going to be building, we are going to be building, you know, five pivot tables and charts and two slicers. So the first one we're going to be doing is the 2014 sales trend. So this is this line right here which shows the sales trend so we can see in january they started out at thirty three thousand dollars in sales they had a big uh they had a big spike in june at fifty six thousand dollars in sales and they ended the year strong at sixty seven thousand dollars in sales all right so let's go ahead and i'm going to create a new sheet and i'm going to go ahead and name this one let's name this the 2014 sales trend because that's what i want is the sales trend line and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert a pivot table. So where is my table or range? I can come over to data and I can select this entire range over here. But remember, because I already named that range, I can just reference the named range. So I can go pivot table. My table or range is called data. And where do I want it? I want it on this existing worksheet. So I can hit OK. So now I can start building this pivot table. I can start building this pivot table. And one thing that's important to know is as you're working on this, make sure that everything's just somewhat similar and somewhat, um, just, just make sure that it's similar and it has a congruent feel. We're going to be using different colors, but it's important to use similar fonts, use, uh, similar styling, just so everything feels cohesive once you bring it into the dashboard. So this is a sales trend. And what I want to do is on the rows, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring over the order date. Right, so on rows, I'm going to bring over the order date, and I can see that it gives me, you know, each of the 12 months, January through December. And what do I want in the values? What am I wanting to show? I am wanting to show the sales. And what are sales? Sales are revenue. That's all the money you brought in. So I can see here that we have each one of our months. That's nice. But one thing I want to do is on rows, when I put in my um, order date, it automatically defaulted to months, and I want to change that to be years. So there are a couple ways to do this. Uh, you know, a lot of times you'll automatically go to value field settings and, it, and you'll go to the subtotals. But the easiest way is if you come up to this um, 
if you come up to this pivot table analyze So if I go over to pivot table analyze, I'm going to go to this group selection right here. And essentially our date is made up of days. Days are in weeks, weeks are in months, months are in years, and months can be in quarters as well. But what I want, since I'm just wanting to show it for the year 2014, I'm going to go to group selection. And I'm going to, instead of having it be in days and months, I'm going to deselect days and make sure that it's on years. So the top one is going to be the year, and then the detail within is, are going to be the individual months here. And this allows me to see a couple different things. One, I can see the, the total revenue that they made in 2014. So if I go ahead and format this, I'm going to go back to the home page. I'm going to do it as a accounting number, you know, just so we have the dollar amount. I'm going to make it so it's zero decimal places. We see that they had $435,036 of revenue in 2014. So now I can click on this chart and I can go to pivot table analyze and I can insert a pivot chart and it has automatically by default goes to this column but I want a line chart so remember our pivot chart for our sales data looks somewhat like this we can look at some of these other ones such as a stacked line line with markers a couple of these other ones and we can play with them a little bit but what I want you to do is go ahead and do this first one so it's just the line so it's just the line so let's hit OK, and we can start formatting this a little bit. So by default, it will give you these headers, which we need to get rid of. So I'm going to remove the field. Oh, let me see. Let me go ahead and undo that. Excuse me. I'm not going to remove the field. I'm going to hide all field buttons on the chart. I'm going to get rid of this legend right here. And it is nice, you know, seeing this uh, vertical axis legend right here, but it doesn't look very clean so i have to you know come to june and i have to go all the way to the top and i say okay i think it's about fifty-five thousand. it would just be a lot clearer and nicer if these uh data points had data labels so i'm gonna hit this plus sign and go to chart elements another way to do that is you click on your chart and you can go to design and you're going to add these chart elements and one thing that i think would be good is having these data labels so one thing that you can do you can have them you know be right on the center you can have them be automatic but what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit this plus sign. I'm going to go to data labels and I'm going to have them be above. I think that that looks good. And we can come in here and we can change things how we want. But actually what this is going to be and how we're going to do this is it's going to be uh, short and long, short and wide. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to look something like this. And because we have these data labels, we don't need this Y axis right here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And then total, we want a name that's a little bit more descriptive. So instead of total, I'm going to go ahead and name that sales trend, sales trend. And then we can add a little bit more detail. Since we have the, the, the data labels, we don't need these, uh, these uh, axes lines. So I'm going to actually delete them, get rid of them. And let's make sure I didn't, uh, let's make sure I didn't miss any of our instructions. So for this first one, this 2014 sales trend, so we have order date, the sum of revenue. We group the data by months and years. We have the trend line is the sum of data by month. We got rid of all buttons and the color. So it is blue. Let's double check that it is blue. Yes, that is correct. We're going to add data, data labels. Oh, and one thing that we need to do as we're working in this is we want to change the way that our uh, data is formatted. Okay. So this looks nice, you know, 55,602, but because we're showing a lot of data, I actually want to make it a little bit easier for us to read. So go ahead and click on one of these data labels and go ahead and go to format data labels. Okay. And in number, we're going to go to uh, the category and we're going to change this to be custom. And the type, there are a couple different custom types that we can do, but I'm going to type in one. Um, I'm going to select this one that says dollar sign zero comma and then it has this space and a k right so you have this dollar sign zero you know and there are a couple different custom ones that we can do but i'm going to go ahead and into this format code i'm going to do dollar sign zero comma and then so that tells me i want a dollar sign at the beginning and then i want my number and then the next argument that i want is what i enter and then in quotation marks i can do quotation and then I'm going to do a K and when I hit enter or if I hit add now I see that I have this custom field and it shows my numbers as a 
as a 33,000K. So it's the thousandths space that we're working with, or the thousands space, not the thousandths. So we have the sales trend. It's looking very good here. So the chart says sales trend. And one thing that we want to do, since we're gonna be working with a lot of pivot tables, it'd be good practice to name our charts and our tables. So come up here to this name box and this def by default, since it's our first chart, instead of naming it chart one, I'm gonna name this sales trend. This will help us when we're reporting connections at the end. Then I'm gonna to go to the pivot table and I'm gonna name the pivot table sales trend pivot table. All right, so these are both named sales trend. These are both named, let's see, I may have. All right, let's make sure I select the entire pivot table and name that sales trend. All right, so now if I go to formulas and go to the name manager, we see we have data here, but that's just for the names. But if we go to this pivot table, um, and then we go to our pivot table analyze, we can see options and the chart name is sales trend, but we need to change the name of the pivot table. Instead of being pivot table one, let's do sales trend, you know, pivot table. So now if we click on this pivot table right here, if we select this entire selection, it should have named our pivot table. All right, so if we go to this pivot table options, it does say sales trend. I don't know why that was so hard for, <laughs> so hard for me to do. All right, so I think that looks good. There are other things that we could add or other things that we could do. You know, we could select our x-axis here and we could do some sort of fill. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it how it is. I overall think that looks good. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a black outline to this. So if I go to design I can change some of these elements that I want but simply what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to format and the shape outline I just want it to be black I want it to be black so format shape outline I want it to be black and you can change the weight if you want some people like a super heavy look you know so you can really see a distinct um, see the distinctness between each of your charts but I'm just gonna have it be this so sales trend I'm gonna go bold that and we're done with our first pivot table so let's make sure we save, 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 save once and it's saved, save twice, it's extra saved. So the next run we're going to do, we are going to be working on the sales by salesperson. So that is that horizontal uh, bar chart that's green that shows the top 10 salespeople. So I'm going to create a new sheet and I'm going to put this at the end. So I like having each of my uh, sheets that I'm adding to the right and having the one that's my main one all the way to the left. So I'm going to rename this from sheet two. So let's name this sales by salesperson sales by salesperson i'm going to go insert pivot table and what's my table and range it comes from the data worksheet but i named it data so i'm just going to reference that and what do i want here on the sales by salesperson i want a couple different things so if i click on my pivot chart here what i'm going to see is that in the rows i want the salesperson right so salesperson is going to go in the rows and then the values is going to be my sales right and sales is revenue so i'm going to go ahead and put that in the values and that's a very quick and easy table that we have here, but automatically it does it in alphabetical order. So it does Andrew Sensini first, ending with Robert Zare. But what I want is I want this not to go A to Z, but I want this to be summed according to the highest value, the highest dollar value. So if I come Z to A, A to Z, that only focuses on the names, but I can come in here and I can do value filters. You know, so I could do maybe the top 10 based on the sum of revenue, so I can hit this, and it would filter it out, but what I want is I want a sort option, so I'm gonna clear that filter, I'm gonna to go to more sort options, and I wanna sort A to Z depending on the sum of revenue, right? So I want it highest to lowest sum of revenue, and when I do that, we see Jan, and by default, A to Z, oh, I guess it's the, the smallest to largest, so I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna fix that, more sort options, I'm gonna do, oh, it's ascending, so I want it descending Z to A based on the sum of revenue, sorry. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to change the amount to be a dollar, you know, and I don't really care about the decimal places. All right, one other thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to this pivot table, analyze the pivot table name. This is going to be sales by salesperson. So now that is my pivot table name. All right, so now what I need to insert now is I need to insert this horizontal bar chart. So I'm gonna to go to insert and I could insert a pivot chart from here, but the easiest way is go to this pivot table, analyze, go to pivot chart, and it gives me a couple different options. So it has this vertical column chart or this horizontal bar chart, and I want this horizontal bar chart right here. So I'm gonna hit the bar chart, I'm gonna hit okay, 
And, you know, we see it gives me a couple different things. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hide all value field buttons on the chart. Hide all field buttons. I'm going to get rid of this axis right here. And, you know, this the axis is good, but I don't want it. I want to actually show the, the labels like what we did before. So I'm going to hit this add chart elements. And I'm going to do a data label. And by default, it sticks it out to the right of the of the horizontal bars which looks nice one thing that I like to change is I don't like how skinny these bars are so what I can do I can right click on this and I can format the data series and I'm gonna change this gap width so basically by shrinking the gap between my bars it makes the bars bigger and then one other thing that we need to change is that the uh, data by default even though it's in uh, descending order you know so Nancy should be the highest paid person or the person who brought in the most uh, revenue in Jan should be the least by default it goes largest to or smallest to largest and what I want is I want it to be largest to small so I'm going to go to sort and I'm going to do Z to A and we see that it's going to switch it but it's going to be based on name so I'm going to go to more sort options again and I want it to be descending A to Z based on the sum of revenue okay let's see why didn't that work here so Oh, I, I, I remember this issue. So Excel, for some reason, likes to have the, the chart be opposite. So by default, it wants to go, <coughs> by default, it wants to go smallest to largest. So I need to do it in kind of backwards order, kind of backwards order. So I'm going to change the name. Instead of it being named total, I'm going to do sales by salesperson. And I'm going to bold this. So let's go ahead and bold this. That looks nice. And one thing that it asks us to do is it asks us to make all of these bars green. So this color, I'm going to click on the bar. I'm going to go to this format data point, And I'm going to color it as green. And you can choose whatever color green you like. But I'm going to change all the bars to kind of be this, this green color right here. So I'm using this dark green. Make sure that you select it once, not multiple times. So I'm going to select on the bars right here. You know, I can I can change the design. I can change the colors. I can do some of these some of these quick layouts look good, but this um, you know shape outline I could change the outline if I wanted to. But how to do it is you have to go to this format data series, and then you're going to go to the fill, and you're going to change the fill to be this dark green color. And actually, I'm going to change it to be a little bit lighter green. I'm going to go to these standard colors right here, and I'm just going to change it to be this green. All right, here a couple other things I could do. I could bold my data labels. So I'm going to do that. Everything else looks pretty good here. Everything looks pretty good. So if I go to Pivot Chart Analyze, it says Chart 1 because it's the first chart on this worksheet. But I'm going to name it Sales by Salesperson. All right, so the next one that we're going to be working with here is the Sales by Region. So I'm going to go and I'm going to add another worksheet. I'm going to go insert pivot table. Where's my data? It's named data. And what do I want this to be? I want this to be the sales by region, right? So in my rows, you guessed it, we're going to put our region. And then in our values, what are we going to put in? We're going to put our sales. We're going to put our revenue. All right. And that looks nice. That's looking good. <clears throat> and this one is going to be a vertical bar chart. But what I want is I want this to be a dollar amount. So I'm going to you know, click the dollar with, with no decimal places. And let's see, so your pivot table and pivot chart will include the region and the sum of revenue. Make sure you go into the value field setting and format the revenue as a sum of revenue as a dollar amount with no decimal places. So what it wants us to do is it wants us to create this vertical bar chart. So I'm going to go to pivot chart or pivot table analyze. I'm going to insert a pivot chart. I'm going to go to this clustered bar chart right here, and I'm going to hide <clears throat> these field buttons. I'm going to get rid of the legend. I want it to show um, these data labels and it wants it to be orange. So I'm going to click on the bar right here and I'm going to go over to format shape. I'm going to go to fill and line and I'm going to change the fill to be orange. That looks a little too yellow for me. So I'm going to hit that orange there. One other thing I want to do is I'm going to right click here. I'm going to format the data series and I'm going to change the gap width. So 
I can't remember what I did on the other one. I should have kept track of that, but this one's like 31. I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and change the title. Title's gonna be sales by region. I'm gonna bold that. All right, I'm gonna bold that. All right, so let's go ahead, click on this pivot chart. Let's go to pivot chart analyze. It's called chart one, but I want this to be sales by region. Let's go ahead and rename the pivot table as well. So I'm gonna to go to pivot table analyze. Instead of pivot table three, this is gonna be sales by region. And why am I adding spaces to the pivot tables, but not to the pivot table chart name? There's no reason for that. I just noticed I was doing that there. There's no real reason why I'm doing that. So one thing that we need to do, and I don't think I did this on the other one, we need to outline the shape as black. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go to this design and or to this format, and I'm going to go to the shape outline. I'm going to change this to be black. I think that looks nice. I'm going to go back to the sales by salesperson, go to the format, and I'm going to make sure that the outline is black and I accidentally clicked on the inner square. Make sure you click on the outside square. So I'm going to go to the design or the format, I keep getting those mixed up, and go to the black. All right, so we have three of our five pivot tables. So let's go ahead and do our top five customers. And this one's called sheet three, our sales by region. I'm just gonna name this real quick. And then we can move on to our top five customers. All right, sheet four, I'm gonna name that top five right here. So I'm going to insert a pivot table where's my data it's called data and i want to go ahead and name this pivot table uh top five customers all right so i can build this but there are a couple different things that i need to do i need to enter my data first so this will include customer name so i'm going to do customer name in the rows and i'm going to do revenue in the values so we have a total of let's see 14 companies so i can uh select these cells here you know, if I highlight them, we can see that, oh, we have 15 companies, right? So I can come down to this count. So we have 15 companies right here, and we have a bunch of different sums of revenue. Let's come in and let's format these to be a counting number with zero decimal places, right? But we only want to show the top five customers. So to do this, we need to sort the data from largest to smallest, right? So I can come to more sort options, and I can do it descending based on the sum of revenue, right? So now we have our top five. But what we want to do is there's actually another way to do this. So we can go to this more sort options and we can manually sort this if we wanted to. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hit this down arrow right here and I'm going to go to uh, these value filters and I'm going to hit top 10 and it's going to ask me, you know, what do you want to show? Do you want to show the top or bottom? How many do you want to show? I want to show the top five. And then what do you want to filter it on? I'm going to filter it based on the sum of revenue. And when I hit OK, we can see that it's filtered out the top five right so company d is the largest company a is the fifth largest based on revenue right so yes it'd be nice to show all of our data but the point of a dashboard is just having a clear and concise view of our data so we have our top five i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to insert and we're going to insert a horizontal yellow bar chart so i'm going to click on uh, my pivot chart i'm going to go to pivot table analyze insert a pivot chart and let's go ahead and go to this bar chart similar to like what we did before so i'm going to hide all of our field buttons. I'm going to get rid of this legend. I'm gonna get rid of the X axis. I'm gonna get rid of the axis lines. And then our chart title, instead of being called total, I'm gonna to do top five customers. And I am going to, you know, bold that text. One other thing I want to do is I want to add data labels. So I'm gonna add these data labels that stick out on the end. I'm gonna bold those. I'm going to change my gap width, so I'm going to right click on format data series, I can do gap width, my other one was 31%, so there's a width of, or there's a space of 31, so I can do 31, and it asks us to do yellow, right, so I'm going to right click on these bars, and I can actually change the fill right from this out, or right from this um, preview, and I can change the fill, and I can do these yellows, right, but that's kind of hard to tell like a distinct difference so if i right click i'm actually going to add just a black outline of these bars just to make it a little bit easier on the eyes a little bit easier on the eyes one thing else that would be good is remember the chart by default is in backwards order right so it goes from largest to smallest on the pivot table but the chart goes uh smallest to largest so i want to flip that around a little bit so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to sort i'm going to go to more options and i'm going to do ascending based on the sum of revenue so my pivot table is going to flip and my chart's going to flip as well so for whatever reason um 
they're flipped and reversed. All right, so we have our top five customers. Let's go ahead and create an outline for this. We're going to go to Format, Shape Outline. I want it to be black. Let's click on our Pivot Chart. Let's go to Pivot Table Analyze. It's called Chart 1, but I want this to be top five customers. And then our Pivot Table is already called Top 5 Customers. So we're good to go. Make sure you save. We have completed four of these Pivot, ta or pivot Tables and Charts. So let's do one more worksheet. And this is going to be the Count of Transactions by Invoice Amount. So let's name this one Count by Amount right so i'm going to insert a pivot table and this one's going to be a little bit different so what is our uh, table or range it is called data so we selected that whole entire range of data and named it data so our pivot table will include revenue and the count of revenue but what does that mean what does that mean so what we're going to do we're going to put revenue in the rows here right and we're actually going to put revenue in the values as well so what does this mean exactly what does this mean exactly? What did we do? We're essentially going to create a bunch of different bins, right? So we're going to create a bunch of different bins. And how we're going to do that, we're going to go to Pivot Table Analyze, and we're going to group the field so it starts at zero and ends at 4000 by $1,000 increments here. So if I go to Pivot Table Analyze, click within the data of our pivot table, I can uh, group the selection. So I'm going to group the selection and I want it to start at zero and I want it to end at 4,000, right? And I want it to do it by 1,000. So if I hit okay, I can see that we have row labels that go from zero to 1,000, 1,000 to 2,000, two to three, three to four, and greater than four. But this is the sum of revenue, right? This just tells me the sum of revenue of transactions that are between zero and a thousand dollars that's not what i want i want a count of revenue so i want you to tell me that there are 10 transactions you know in the zero to a thousand there are three transactions between three and four thousand i don't want to know the sum of all of those um transactions added up i want to know how many of those transactions occurred right so i don't want to know the dollar amount total i want to know how many different transactions occurred how i'm going to do this is i want to change this sum of revenue to be account of revenue i'm going to go to my pivot table fields it's in my field list if you accidentally got rid of that you can click on your pivot table come to pivot table analyze click field list right click on the sum of revenue or just click on the sum of revenue go to value field settings and you're going to summarize the value field by and right now it's on sum, but i want you to change it to be count so now we can see that we have 218 transactions that range from between zero and a thousand dollars and we only have 11 that are greater than four thousand dollars and we have a grand total of 369 transactions so if we go back to our data go to the very bottom we can see that we have 370 rows minus our header row 369 so we have 369 transactions and all 369 transactions are accounted for in this table right here in this pivot table all right so let's go ahead and insert our bar chart so i'm going to go to pivot table analyze i'm going to go to pivot chart and i want this clustered column i think this looks great and let's do what we've been doing so let's go ahead and hide all field buttons on chart let's get rid of this legend let's change the title to be count by invoice amount actually let's change i'm gonna do count of transactions by amount by invoice amount i'll do that how does that sound so count of transactions by invoice amount i'm going to bold the header here then remember to keep our styling similar i don't want this or that y-axis i'm going to get rid of these um, horizontal lines and i'm going to add data labels right so i can see how many transactions happen one other thing i'm going to uh, select these data bars i'm going to come over to the series options to the these bars over here in my format data series and i'm going to change the gap width to be 31 percent i'm just going to type that in manually 31 percent and that looks good and it asks us to keep it blue right so we're good there so i'm going to make sure that the outline the shape outline is black let's see i think that looks good and I think we're good there. So we can go ahead and save. And now we can actually start creating our dashboard. So I'm going to create a new worksheet and I'm going to name it dashboard, but I'm going to bring it all the way to the left, all the way to the left. I kind of just like having my main dashboard all the way to the left, right? Dashboard. All right. 
And I want to select every cell. So I'm going to select above the one and left of the A. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to change the background to gray, right? So yes, I could put all my pivot tables just laid out through here, but I think it looks good if you have some sort of color scheme, right? So I'm going to, you know, I can do everything gray. You know, I could come in here and I could, you know, insert a picture. I could do some other different things if I really wanted to. You know, I can get rid of the grid lines, headings, get rid of the formula bar. So maybe if I send this to someone, I come in here and I play with the formatting a little bit just to make it a little bit nicer. Uh, you know, I can mess with a bunch of other stuff. But essentially what I want now is I just want you to insert uh, a color into each one of these cells. You know, so it could be black, but I'm just going to select gray. You know, I think just gray would be nice and just provide a little bit of a professional look that we're looking for. I'm going to do a slightly darker gray. All right, so I'm going to do above the one to the left of the A. I'm going to select this A. The one I'm going to use is light gray background to <laughs> whatever that big long name is. All right, and I can start copy and pasting each one of my each one of my dashboard parts into here, each one of my pivot tables. All right, so if I look at the finished pivot table, we see that we have the sales trend on the top, sales dashboard, sales by region, top five customers, and count transactions by invoice amount. So I'm gonna go back to my dashboard, go to sales trend. What I can do, I can just control C, go back to dashboard, control V. Or if you're on a Mac, it's gonna be command C, command V. So I'm just gonna copy and paste each one of these pivot tables into my dashboard. Open, let's see, why did I get rid of that other one? All right, so make sure you're selected in a different area. And then once they're all in here, I can start um, arranging them a little bit better. All right, so I have sales by region. Last, I need the top five and the count by invoice amount. So let's just make sure these all are in there. All right, so the sales trend, I'm gonna have this be at the top, but remember, we're gonna have this title here. So I'm gonna have sales trend, and this one doesn't necessarily need to be super tall. So I think that looks good, but I wanna make sure all my other data can be shown. So the other one in the left is gonna be the sales by sales person, and I'm gonna shrink this, you know, to be half the width of the sales trend. The one to the right of that is sales by region. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm going to adjust the width and I'm kind of doing it just manually right now, but I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do it a little bit better after. So let's see top five customers goes below the sales by sales person. So I'm just doing it like by hand right now, but once I finish putting them all together, I can start arranging things a little bit nicer. All right, and I want some sort of title. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to insert a shape. I'm going to insert just a big rectangle. So I want it roughly to be, you know, just barely above our chart area. And I want it to just aesthetically fit, you know, and I want it to be kind of the same shape. So the outline, I want it to be black, but the fill, I'm going to have it be white, right? Because if we look back at my, at the example, you know, it said, you know, it said XYZ company dashboard. And let's see, the text should be just black text. All right, so I'm going to double click in here. So I can either double click in this rectangle and start typing, or we can click in this box right here and I can do XYZ, you know, company 2014, 2014 dashboard. If I could type. And it says that the reference isn't valid. All right, and let's see, I th oh, I found, I think I know my issue. So I'm gonna click on this shape, and if I go to shape format, you know, the fill is black, or the, the fill is white, and the outline is black, you know, and then we have to go to text fill, and I'm gonna reference this black. And now if I start typing, yep, so make sure that you change the text to be black. So this is gonna be XYZ company dashboard, XYZ company 2014 dashboard. All right, so now when I select my my text, what I can do is I can come back to the home page and I can increase the size of the text. So I want it to be, you know, big, but maybe not too overbearing. And I'm going to put it in the middle and I'm going to center it. 
So now when someone opens up this dashboard, they will be able to know what it is. It's the XYZ Company 2014 dashboard. And this is looking pretty good. There are a couple other things that I could change just to make everything a little bit better. So sales by region, it looks like I forgot to take off these, uh, the vertical axes and these axes lines. So I'm going to get rid of these, you know, make sure that each one of these data labels is bolded. I'm going to make sure that I do that just to make everything look a little bit neater and nicer. So one thing that I want to do is I want to make this dashboard interactive. So if someone only focuses on the East region, I want to allow them to do that. I want to allow them to, you know, see their region. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert some slicers. So I'm going to click on one of these pivot charts. I'm going to go to pivot table, analyze. And what I can do is I can insert a slicer. So I'm going to go to pivot table, analyze. I'm going to insert a slicer and I want it to slice or filter based on two things. I want it to be based on salesperson and region. So I'm going to select the salesperson salesperson and I'm going to select the region. So I'm going to select both of those hit okay. And it's going to bring up two different filters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these kind of right next to my data that I have here, you know, just kind of towards the top. So it looks neat, looks nice. And to make it a little bit better, I'm actually going to slide my title over, you know, our, over our slicers just a little bit, you know, so I'm going to shrink this one. So it just contains the data that I want without having to scroll. So now if I were to select one of these slicers, it's going to only adjust that specific pivot table that I selected. So when I made these slicers, I did it the cells by region, right? But I want it to control all five of these pivot tables. So what I can do is I can do something called report connections. I can do report connections. So I'm going to click on this slicer, go to the slicer uh, button on the ribbon, and I'm going to go to report connections. And right now, the only connections that it reports or the only connections that it has is it's to the cells by region. But I'm actually going to select all five of these pivot charts, and that's why I named them. So now, you know, if I wanted to see what Michael uh, Nieper did, I can click him and I can see all of his different data, right? So I need to go in, I need to do that for salesperson and I need to do that for region. So what I can do, I can right click and, oh, I can click on region. I'm going to go up to slicer and I'm going to go to report connections and I'm going to report all these connections. I'm going to select all the pivot tables. So now if I want to see who's in the North region, you know, I can see the North had $141,000 in sales. I can see that's Nancy and Michael. And I can see their invoice amounts that they had. And I could come in here and I could look at my data a little bit more in detail. All right, so a couple other things before we end. We're pretty much done. Make sure you save, but there are a couple other things we want to do to make sure everything looks very nice and very clean. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to double check that everything that we've created is how it should. Let's see. So one thing it asks us to do is it wants us to sort this sales by region by largest to smallest. So it should go Let's see, North, East, Southwest. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to sort more options and I'm going to do largest to smallest. So I'm going to click largest to smallest and that's sorted well. And let's see, let's see if there's any, all right, let's see. All right, this looks pretty good, honestly. So there are some other things that we could do in here. So if I wanted to, I could make each one of these charts uh, a similar size. So I could select these charts. And if I wanted to, I could select all four of them and I could come to this um, height and width column right here. And let's say I wanted them all to be the exact same size as cells by region. So if we come to the cells by region, click on it, go to format, it's 3.51 by 4.73. So let's say I want to change that to be, you know, 3.5, 4.75, you know, that's, let's just say that's looks good. So I can select all of these four different pivot charts, you know, and I go back to shape format. So I can do 3.5 and then I'm going to do four, oh, let's do 4.75. And now they're all going to be exactly the same dimensions. And then I can come in and adjust these a little bit more. You know, so everything looks a little bit more cohesive. But once I did that, it threw everything that was above it slightly out of whack, just a little bit. So I can come in here, I can change the width. And there's some other things that we can do with the formatting. 
Um, we could align everything. We can snap it to the grid. We can snap it to a shape. So it would, you know, snap according to the cells that we have, you know, but that's, that's something that we can work on. You can play with the, the formatting of all of these for ages. Honestly, you could do this for days and days, make it exactly perfect. But for now, I think everything looks pretty nice. Let's just make sure everything works. You know, when we click Andrew, it shows up when we click, you know, South. We have the people who work in the south or in the west or a combination of them. So overall, I think this looks good. Make sure that you save. And this is just a very simple dashboard in Excel. Our next assignment that we're going to do, we're going to do it a little bit more complex. And we're going to be adding icons. We're going to be working with gradients. We're going to be doing a lot more complex things. So good job on this assignment. I know I made some mistakes working through this. Um, but thanks for sticking with me. And let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day and happy learning.